The Holden has made all the difference. I was a mid-career, I was a lawyer, I had a, a public defender, uh, I had a family and two little girls. I mean, I just could not have afforded to do this. And I, in my busy professional life and family life, would not have made time. Uh, it, it just wouldn't have happened in the way that it did happen for me. And uh, when I got that, that call that I had won it, it was uh, so tremendously uh, valid, validating and uh, what happened at Warren Wilson uh, after that was amazing. Uh, it made a difference in that uh, my friends, my family members, my spouse uh, took me seriously. Not that they hadn't before, but uh, uh, it, it was something of real a substance that I could point to and also it's one of these validating things it makes you feel that okay uh, 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 you maybe you have some talent or you're moving in the right direction so the Holden has made all the difference in the in the world uh, to me the Holden scholarship for me um, was kind of an affirmation that I could do something that I've always enjoyed doing, um, but never really pursued seriously in a structured environment. I was afraid to take that leap and, um, you know, name myself a, a writer. There was this kind of risk-averse fear that I had that, you know, I, I like writing, but maybe I'm not like a real writer. And so when I um, received the phone call, I think from Pete Turchi, and saying that I had received the Holden Fellowship, it. It just gave me that extra nudge. Well, actually, it was more of like a boot kick, you know, to go and just finally go do this thing that you love doing, you've loved doing since you were a child, that you've always been too afraid to do. And it was the impetus that I needed personally to make that big leap. The memory that feels the most emblematic for me of my experience there was the semester I worked with Agash Ahed Ali. He was dealing with the loss of his mom at the time and had to go back to Kashmir, India to deal with the funeral. And while there, he, you know, this was before the internet, so we weren't doing this, sending emails or anything. And so he sent me my packet, um, FedEx Global Express. Um, and, you know, he was opening by talking about, you know, the funeral and the arrangements and how, just hollowed out he was you know, with the entire experience. and. Um, it, it, it was just one of those moments that was uh, incredibly moving to me to think that he had taken that time to go through each of my poems, all my annotations, um, and also to share that personal part of himself with me in those letters. Um, it's something I carry with me um, into my own teaching as well, and thinking that I want to try to give, give as much back to these students as I, I got in the program myself. I was coming back from a a lecture one day with Andrea Barrett and she was going to be working with me on my essay and she wanted me to write my uh, my thesis my, my critical thesis excuse me on Jean Reese's Wide Sargasso Sea and she said because I noticed that you had wrote a few smaller annotations on it and this was the other you know it was again like she significantly already went into my file and knew a lot about my work and she goes like those two annotations have these really rich things that you could use to actually create your critical essay and it'll be important for you as a writer and she asked me have you ever read a writer named Michael Ondaatje and I said no and she said why not and I said because just like it took me a long time to read Jean Reese because when I first read a little bit of it, I was afraid to read any further because I heard my own voice in her writing. And I, I feel the same thing with Andachi. And she said, well, you need to develop your writing family. Who are the writers that are a part of your family? She says, you write about memory, exile, silence, language. and." you see that there's people all over the world in different languages where, or English is their second language who are doing very similar things and all those people are a part of your family. So you want to think of like how Michael Andachi is a part of your family. So I went that afternoon actually, evening, and bought uh, a book of his at Malaprops and then read it almost all the whole night. And it just started everything really well. So that was really important. Um, when I work with my own writers now as a mentor, we never really talk about uh, tradition. I try to get them away from that because they get too much of a, 
as Harold Bloom says, that anxiety of influence. They're worried about, you know, where do they fit in the tradition. The level of rigor in that program and the way that prepared us um, as writers, the, the, the training, the way we think about books, the way we're trained to read, the way we're trained to respond to work, you don't find that every place. We've gone to different programs as maybe visiting faculty or whatever, and uh, um, we always like bring that Warren Wilson way of, of uh, giving a talk or delivering a lecture and people are, to us it's just normal, it's just what we do. And people are always surprised, but I think um, they're, they're surprised and they're also grateful for the information that we are sharing and the way we're thinking about writing and the way we've been kind of trained in, in the craft of writing. And it's like people out there seem to be thirsty for that kind of, of information and insight into the literature and, I, and I'm not knocking other programs but I'm just saying that there's a very particular way that Warren Wilson trains you to be a writer and you know it at the time when you're in the program but you really come to appreciate it once you once you graduate and I just I can't thank the program enough for that. The Holden Scholarship was transformative for me. Uh, there's no way I could have uh, attended Warren Wilson without it. Being in the program with other Holden um, scholars uh, made a difference because it felt like I had a, a, another cohort of, of writers there with me. Um, Fred Arroyo being one, um, Michael Thomas, Rodney Jack. Um, these were all um, other Holden scholars who were around me at the time. One thing that was very touching when I was talking about my thesis manuscript and uh, uh, Ellen stood in and, and gave me some advice about that. She says, uh, she referred to William Matthews who had been in the program who had died before I was there and she said, I, I think that you're in his tribe. She gave me an uncorrected proof of Time and Money, this Williams Matthews book, which, uh, you know, I still have. I think that's one of the best things uh, that a person really would want in a program like this is to leave with that sense of community, to actually feel it in their everyday lives. The Holden was everything. It was uh, a beacon, it uh, was a refuge, it was a sanctuary once I got there, and I really also feel like I had another layer of connection with the other Holden scholars because we all, you know, had this kind of common experience and it was just a tremendous gift and I will always be grateful, always.